One of my favorite ways to make apples is in an apple pie. However, I'm not really into making pie crust anymore. I don't like the store-bought ones, so I just eliminated it. You can roast fruit in the oven just using this method. Uh, get some fruit if you want. Um, it's got to be pretty much like a, a hard fruit, like a, a pear, an apple, a peach, a plum. Peaches and plums are considered stone fruits. They have the seeds in the middle, and they work really well for this. You can leave the skins on if you wanted to, especially if it's an organic apple. I like mine peeled. Sometimes the skin doesn't bake as softly as I'd like it to. I'm pretty much known for my apple pies around Thanksgiving or Christmas time, and I take days to bake all of the pumpkin and what else do I make? I make tons of pumpkin roll and cookies and pies. But this way we can have an apple crisp any time of year, especially when I'm using my oven for something else. If I have to crank that oven up, especially in the summertime, I want to make sure that I can use as much as possible of that heat. So I'll try to do a double duty. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some homemade granola and I'm going to make an apple crisp. Now you can also make, I'm going to roast it. You can put the oatmeal combo on top and make it a crisp or you can just add granola to it afterwards. So I cut my apple in half and then I quarter it again. And then what I do is I take my knife on an angle and I get out that core. So that's pretty much all you need to do. And you can make some time pretty quick. I also like my apple pretty thinly sliced. And I know every time you hear how to make an apple pie or apple crisp or apple tart, they say get a certain type of baking apple. And I'm gonna tell you, I don't think there's a, a difference. I'm sure the purists are going to argue with me and say, yes, there's a difference between Granny Smith's and absolutely, there are so many different varieties of apples and they definitely have a different taste. But when you're baking them, it all depends on what you're looking for. Are you looking for a really sturdy, tart flavor? Or are you looking for just a nice, soft apple that's going to give you some sweetness? And what's great about apples is they are low for fruit on the glycemic index, which means apples and pears are some fruit that don't spike your sugar like some other fruits do. Like bananas are really high. Um, I would think peaches are pretty high as well. Oranges, but don't quote me. I just know how to eat the stuff. I don't know all of the placements on the chart. All that stuff is Googleable. Anything that's Googleable isn't committed to memory anymore. How to make an apple crisp? That's up there. So once you get your apples cut, this is gonna make a pretty good one. And this is just two apples. This is about a pound of apples. And these were, uh, I believe they were Gala apples, Gala or Fuji. They were on sale. So this is what I'm talking about when I say, get what's on sale and then work the meal matrix around it. So you have apples and you bought them with your tic-tac-toe tactics board and you're gonna create, I need a bowl. You're gonna create a meal by what you buy and what's on sale. Instead of looking for specifically a recipe that's going to pigeonhole you into just making one specific dish. I mean, that's fine for special occasions, but for everyday cooking and to try to be healthy every day and stay on a budget and not feel that you're cramping your style because you've got to do all this special heavy lifting to stay healthy. Go off the board, <clears throat> get all your whole foods, get what, <clears throat> excuse me, get what's in season, and you're not going to have a problem. And on sale. And then you start working with it. 
if the kids aren't eating the apples as they are fresh, maybe you want to roast them up. Like I said, when you have your cooking days, you want to use all your time wisely. I add a little bit of lemon, a teeny tiny pinch of salt, to counteract some of the sugars, and then I'm going to use coconut sugar instead of white sugar. Coconut sugar, as far as sugar goes, is a low glycemic sugar, so it's a staple in my household. I use less sugar in my drinks and my coffees than white sugar. So we're going to start with two, two tablespoons. That should be enough. And then flavor it with any spice you want. Come out, come out wherever you are. A little nutmeg. You know what? I don't think my cinnamon's in here. My cinnamon is in my condiment box, which is always on my counter. And I don't believe in too little cinnamon. I don't believe in too much. So we we'll add a little bit of the nutmeg adds a little bit different flavor. My spoon. So you want to toss and coat the apples. And apples make their own juice. They're gonna melt down and get real buttery. So you don't really need to do anything else. If you wanted to cut the sugar even farther, you could probably be sufficient with one tablespoon. One tablespoon per apple is what I did, but you probably could do one tablespoon and it would be just fine. Apples are so sweet. And I'm gonna use my little baking dish, stoneware, swear by it. You can use any glass or metal. I prefer glass baking. Now these are all going to bake down, but I'm going to try to arrange them in here so that they're not going to give me a problem later. And if you wanted to make a crumble for the top, you could take some quick cook oats or instant oats, or you could even take some old fashioned, mush them up with some butter, maybe add a little bit more sugar to the top to get it to stick and put it right on top. But this is fine with me. I'm going to put it right in the oven. Now these take about 45 minutes usually to bake, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little more, depending how thick you cut your apples. And what I'm going to do is halfway, I'm going to check it, and I'm going to push a little bit of my apples to the side, grab that juice, and pour it over top. I don't know if I'm going to be able to demonstrate that because this is going to be so hot. Uh, so I just want to let you know that's part of my, that's part of my trick. That's also something that you can't do with an apple pie. But when you have crumble and you put that on top of the granola on top of your apple crisp, it creates a seal and it crisps that up really nicely. All right. It's warm in here. 